Hello there, my fellow soldiers of fortune, and welcome back to another video on Battletech lore. Today we shall make another entry into our relatively new mini-series on famous mercenary companies of the Battletech setting. And I am very pleased to say that this time we are gonna cover one unit that is very dear to yours truly. Mostly because I narrated no less than six novels on them. Ladies and gentlemen, the Grey Death Legion. In this relatively short history of the unit. Do stay until the end as well and vote on a future topic. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? Once upon a time, the planet Trell-1, also known locally as Trell-1, was garrisoned in the name of House Steiner by a unit called Carlisle's Commandos. Unfortunately, it was this unit that Duke Hasid Rickel of the Draconis Combine attacked when trying to seize the world. The invaders, elements from the rather bandit-ish Oberon Confederation, would shatter the garrison and drive the survivors off-planet. Grayson Carlisle, the son of the mercenary unit commander, and pretty much the sole remnant of the unit left on Trell-1, was then hired by the planetary government to build a military unit and defend the world against the bandits. Despite his very young age, he was a skilled mech warrior, with great knowledge about battle mechs, and with this knowledge he formed the Trellwan Lancers, and then achieved some rather spectacular victories against the bandits. They captured several enemy battle mechs and mech warriors, including Lori Kalmar, who would eventually join him and become his wife and second in command. It was also on Trellwan that Carlisle met a man called Renfred Thor, an unlucky ship captain who was forced to bring the bandits all the way to Trellwan. With the help of Thor and his jump ship, Carlisle would uncover Rickle's plot and manage to inform the Lyran Commonwealth of all of it forcing the Duke to leave Trellwan, but only after the Combine forces were unable to destroy Carlisle and his unit in a final battle. The young man then took the remnants of the Lancers to make a new mercenary unit, and dubbed it the Grey Death Legion. This newly formed Grey Death Legion would then travel to Galatea, known as the Mercenary Star, seeking employment. There, they would recruit new members, and were hired by a representative of the Verfandi Revolutionary Council. You see, this planet had been traded to the Draconis Combine some years later by House Steiner, and many of the people there were engaged in a guerrilla war against the Combine army. It quickly became obvious to Carlyle that the Legion could not just train the rebels, they would also need to participate to ensure that the rebellion was successful. Should also be noted that, with their dropship out of commission after arriving on the planet, that was the only way they could leave. Several members of the Rebel Council were, in the beginning, against the Legion's participation, mainly due to concerns of their ability to actually pay the men. But Carlyle succeeded in reassuring them that his units were committed to fighting the injustices on the planet, regardless of the compensation. The rebellion was concluded successfully when Carlyle led a raid to free Lori Kalmar, who was captured by the Kuritans earlier. During this raid, Carlyle was also able to secure an enemy marauder battle mech, which later became strongly identified with him. The Legion also caught the Combine mechs in a crossfire during the final moments of the rescue, and despite some heavy casualties, the rebels came out victorious, and the Combine abandoned the planet. Following the Verfandi campaign, the Legion then signed a contract with House Merrick for a set of campaigns against House Liao of the Capellan Confederation. The unit did perform very well during several operations and garnered a very good reputation. Following their successful capture of Sirius V in early 3028, the unit planned to return on its landholding on the world of Helm. One of the terms of the contract with House Merrick stipulated that the Grey Death Legion would get a thief on the planet. Unfortunately, unknown to either the Grey Death Legion or Janos Merrick, that thief also held an ancient Star League weapons cache, including an extensive database. A rogue Comstar presenter known as Emilio Rahan would then create a Byzantine plot 
involving a free worldling noble whereby the legion was framed for the Tiantan massacre, the destruction of the dome city of Tiantan on Sirius V. The unit was obviously kept uninformed about the atrocities committed following their departure, but at the same time sensing something amiss, and despite orders from the Duke to go to Marek, Carlisle instead led the legion back to their landhold on Hell. Here they discovered that while the unit was off-world, the militia units of the Free World League had invaded Helm, among them a unit called the Twelve Atrian Dragoons, who believed fully the story of the atrocity on Sirius V. Tragically, they killed or captured many of the unit's dependents that were left on world. When the Legion returned, they found their stronghold devastated and they themselves were under attack. They eventually did learn about the possible existence of a starly cache on the planet. And as it turns out, none other than Duke Hasid Rickle had come all the way from the Draconis Combine following the same leads as the Comstar Presenter. Carlyle then struck a deal with Rickle, managed to find the cache, and realized that the library was the target of Rahan's machinations all along. Besieged and attacked by pursuing Marik units, Rickle and the Grey Death Legion managed to secure a copy of the Hell Memory Core and a small fraction of the cache's extensive treasures before the facility self-destructed. Carlyle, in a rather selfless fashion, decided afterwards that the core was too valuable to be held by one single person. Following that, he made certain that as many copies were created as possible and disseminated throughout the inner sphere, an action that cemented his reputation as a hero of the people. I might have made mention of the discovery of the Hell Memory Core in many previous Battletech videos. Well, this is the guy who achieved that. The unit would then return to Galatea to rest and refit, and then they were involved in Operation Götterdämmerung, a major Lyran offensive of the Fourth Succession War. During the opening wave of attacks in August 3028, the Legion would capture Shion Noha. During the exploitation phase, launched on the 21st of October, following the success of the first wave of Operation Götterdämmerung, the Grey Death Legion then captured Heinfeld in what was a significant victory for the Commonwealth. The Legion was subsequently hired by a faction within the Commonwealth in 3029 and charged with several raids into Kuritan space as part of House Steiner's Orestes campaign, including savage fights on Caldrea and Otho, a delaying action on Trolloc Prime, and an assault on Baldur. By 3030, the unit allowed Steiner forces to disengage on Lothan, disrupting an invasion fleet at Nox, and captured a vast amount of supplies and equipment on Darius, growing all the way to regimental size. After the War of 3039, the Legion had a long-term garrison contract with the Federated Commonwealth, and they were stationed on Sudeten with some occasional pirate hunting missions. When the mighty clans popped up in 3050 and rolled through pretty much any and all opposition, it was the Grey Death Legion that were one of the few units that fought them off with success. They did suffer heavy casualties on Sudeten though, where they had been stationed prior to the invasion, eventually losing that world to Clan Jade Falcon. But on Pandora, despite having to disobey orders to succeed, managed to defeat the clans for the first time ever. With severe damage to the Legion, and having acquired a lot of Lost Tech, or as the Legion calls it, Found Tech, they became very famous as one of the premier mercenary units in the Inner Sphere. It was in 3056 that the Legion was gifted with the world of Glengarry, in a political move by Victor Steiner Davion, but immediately they had to defend the planet against Sky Separatists, who definitely did not want them there. The defensive guerrilla campaign was led by Alexander Carlyle, the son of Grayson and Laurie. The younger Carlyle then held out until the full unit returned home to take care of business. Although the forces on the planet suffered heavy losses and the loss of Alexander's best friend, Davis Clay. Sometime after that, the third senior officer of the Legion, Davis McCall, would receive word from his estranged family that atrocities were being committed on his own homeworld of Caledonia. This was all part of an elaborate plot by Marshal Brandel Gareth 
to discredit and disband the entire legion as part of his own ploy to carve a small empire for himself. After a failed assassination attempt by Gareth on Grayson and Lori, elements of the legion deployed to Caledonia, and they were ordered by the government to fire on civilians, leaving them with the option of either causing atrocities or breaking interstellar law. Obviously, Grayson being a man of the people, he refused to obey, and broke contract with the Federated Commonwealth. With the previous intelligence gathered by McCall and Alexander Carlyle, Grayson would side with the rebels, and even though they were outnumbered 2-1 to one by elements of the 3rd Davian Guards, they defeated them in battle. Unfortunately, a traitor planted in the unit would ambush Grayson Carlyle in his battle mech and cripple him doing some irreparable damage to his inner ear, making sure that he would never pilot a battle mech again. Meanwhile, Gareth moved against Glengarry in an attempt to destroy the Legion for breaking their contract. Lori managed to hold off the attacking force until the rest of the Legion arrived from Caledonia and sent Gareth's units packing, leaving the battle to be ended in the courts. The senior staff of the unit were summoned to the capital world of Farkad, just as Catherine Steiner Davion announced the separation of the Lyran Alliance from the rest of the state. The Legion, unfortunately, were found guilty of breaking their contract. From there, Grayson would leave the unit and go undercover to work with Gareth on Hesperus, attempting to ascertain what Brandel Gareth had planned. A little later, Gareth then declared an independent state called the Free Star Republic, having gotten the young, impressionable Daniel Brewer, the CEO of the great factory Defiance Industries, to support his grab for power. The Legion were then deployed to support Gareth on Hesperus, but instead they turned around and captured the factory in the name of House Steiner. The Legion then defended the factory against the forces of Gareth, while Grayson Carlyle led a daring commander raid to capture a jump ship and go get help from House Steiner. After all these adventures, both Grayson and Lori were awarded the Mackenzie Hammer by a very grateful Catherine Steiner Davion, and then re-awarded Glengarry as a permanent home. Sadly, things do not go well from here. In 3065, the Legion received orders to reinforce the defenders of Hesperus II against possible invaders, whether they might be Victor Steiner Davian's army or Sky Rebels. There they would fight alongside the 15th Lyran Guards and the 36th Lyran Guards against the 4th Sky Rangers, the 17th Sky Rangers, and the 22nd Sky Rangers. Still, they were able to defend Defiance Industries. The victory of the Lyran forces essentially spelled out an end for the rebellion, although it came at a very heavy cost to the Legion. They ceased existing as a combat command. What remained of the unit was folded into the Defiant Security Forces, as the highest ranking surviving officer, Daniel Brewer, was also chief executive of Defiance Industries. This unit was then annihilated during the Jihad. Grayson Carlyle died in 3065 of cancer. His wife, Lori, inherited his mech and position as commanding officer of the unit, but that wouldn't last very long either. During the final battle against the Separatists held at the Defiance Industries complex, Lori Kalmar Carlyle was killed by a hand grenade while fighting pursuing infantry after having ejected from the mech. Alexander Carlyle, who had been serving in the LAAF in the Second Royal Guards on Farkad, had intended to rebuild the Legion, but was prevented by several factors. Firstly, he was not allowed to leave his own unit in the midst of the Fedcom Civil War. In the aftermath of the war, the family was stripped of all its holdings on Glengarry, and the Mercenary Review and Bonding Commission indicated that because of the Legion's spotty track record with turning on their employers, they could not be graded appropriately. Still an LAAF officer, Alexander Carlyle was on Farkad when it was bombed from orbit at the beginning of the Jihad. Some of the surviving support staff would then later return to Glengarry and form Gradef Technologies to continue manufacturing and market the Legion's own unique battle armor, the Gradef Standard and the Gradef Scout. Gradef Technologies would later be bought out and absorbed into Defiance Industries in the post-Jihad era. 
For today's poll, it is once again concerning other mercenary units. But unlike the Northwind Highlanders video, it is gonna contain only two options. Option A is the Eridani Light Horse, and option B is Kells Hounds. I should also let you know that, despite the voting on this video, I will probably only implement it two or three videos from now, as I do want to try to keep my content diverse. To vote, simply write down your choice in the comments below. Thank you very much for participating. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you as a brief history of a kind of the Grey Death Legion mercenary unit. There's obviously a lot more to the story of these people, and for once you can actually hear almost all of it by listening to my Grey Death Legion audiobooks, which you can find on my channel. There are six audiobooks in total. Are you a fan of the Grey Death Legion and slash or Grayson Carlyle? What do you like most about this guy and his unit? Do you know of any other famous campaigns they took part in? If you do, do share your thoughts and opinions on the topic in the comments below as usual. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe and share for future content. And if you'd like to support the channel more directly, you can also visit my Patreon page and pledge however much you can there. I thank you very much for watching to the end, and I wish you all a very healthy and awesome day. This is GDN signing out.